guys and welcome back to a new episode. Today we will be looking at Satoru Umizawa. It's a pretty sneaky deck and a pretty simple one at that. Basically we're looking to ninjutsu in humongous creatures into play and without casting them for their actual mana cost. So you want to, got a lot, you want to get lots of small creatures out that have some sort of evasion. So we're looking at cards like Yon T. Mellison, whenever it attacks alone it can't be blocked, really powerful. Even stuff with flying is really good. 2 1 flyer and thieving skydiver can even steal something off your opponents. Tetsuka Umazawa says creatures you can draw power or toughness 1 can't be blocked. Really handy. And then you want to finish your opponents off as soon as possible with amazing haymakers like Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. 10 mana, 10 10 indestructible whenever it attacks. Defending player exiles the top 20, so that's going to be very quick when that, you know, when that starts hitting. Villas Broker of Blood, Jinga Taxius. Uh, both the Jinga Taxes, in fact. Uh, you've got Demon of Loathing, which is really good. Whenever that deals damage to a player, they sack a creature. So this gets rid of any future blockers they may have. So yeah, it's a very simple, very fun deck to play with. And uh, the deck list will be in the description below if you want to copy this and have a go yourself. Don't forget to leave me a like and a sub if you appreciate the gameplay that is uh, about to unfold before your very eyes. And if you could be so kind to look at my Kofi. Uh, donations page if any of you would like to make a donation after seeing my video. So let's get into some games. Okay, the opponent goes first with Trostani Discordant. Interesting deck. Don't think I've ever seen someone use this on Historic Brawl, but nevertheless a very cool general and uh, it's going to give them a lot of blockers if they can cast it. And we've got a really nice amount of interaction in our hands, some ramp. Ranger Glass gives him a Wolfie Boy. So I think we definitely go for the Signet here. And we could go for the Satoru next turn. We'll see what happens here. If we get a Toxrel out, this kind of just annihilates their entire deck. Okay, so the Sweden with a Wolfie. So. Firstly, I'm going to see what's in the hand, just to kind of get rid of any, any removal spells, any kind of source to plowshares, or what have we got. So we have the Fateful Absence and the Cast Out. I guess we'll go for the Fateful. Land on top is perfectly fine. And no artifacts in hand, so I think I'll go for the Skydiver, just to get a body out. And then it might distract them as well, so they might use the cast out on it. I should have known they were desperate for plays because they went for the f the phase two on this. It's even tempting to go for the Thief of Sanity as well, because they could just cast that away. Again, no lands. So they don't get a land. They are in trouble. Let's go for the Thief of Sanity, so this can be a decoy. And then there's ops just to see if we can get another land. Yeah, land is fine. Because we want we want to get to the tox row, don't we? And I don't think I'm gonna attack there, just because I kinda wanna block. I don't really want to take five from the wolf. Did they get an extra land here? Might be time for them to cycle this to find a landing. Otherwise they're just gonna get really stuck here. So let's stop the five going through, because that is getting quite silly. So they did find the land. So are they going to cast out here? They are. Okay, cool. So we scared them. We scared them. The Grasp is going to be useful. So now we can go for the Satoru Umizawa and we can use the Grasp as well to take care of the Wolf because that is getting pretty scary, to be honest. I mean, if they have another mana, then they could also go for the Trostani. And we don't want to see that either, do we? But then we could get a mana into Toxrill. So they didn't get the mana. Heroic Intervention. Wowzers. Okay. Sap Vitality. So this does 3 damage. And then something in a hand. Um, so. Turn that online. Oh, okay, we can't actually attack with this, can we? Because it hasn't got Vigilance. But it has got Menace. No, it's fine. We'll just pass the turn. 
and I couldn't have really done much with this, anything else anyway. I couldn't have cast Toxrill or the Scholar, and I can still go for the Sap Vitality if they choose to attack. So they don't attack me. Okay, so they missed a mana again. Right, so now we have mana. We can literally hard cast whatever we want. So I think we'll just go for the Toxrill hard cast here, which is somewhat unbelievable. We're hard casting our huge cheaty boys. Now we don't even have to do anything, we just have to wait, I guess. And if they go for the Elish Norn, then our minus counters kind of sort of override theirs. Their, their buffs. But we'll see. ECD goes for the Tox roll. Okay, that is pretty annoying. Not going to lie. They're getting pretty lucky. Jinga Taxius. Um... Right, so I'm going to give it a Scholar here, and that's because in their next turn this goes to phase 2, which means our non-creature spells are going to cost more. And I won't be able to do this the next turn, because this grass would cost plus 2. But the following turn, Jin is a safe bet, because it doesn't need to do anything else to just be hugely imposing. Here comes Trostani. So lots of blockers here and they can revive nothing, they've got nothing to revive so let's go for the Jin. and yeah let's leave the blockers so they go for Alish Norn 3, 4, f okay so they haven't got enough mana for Alish Norn, so that's fine they can do it next turn perhaps, they could also flicker the Trostani so we're going to want to use the Sap Vitality to get 6 damage off on the Trustani, but then they do have the Ephemerate, so we have to be very careful here. Oh, Sign in Blood. Yeah, let's do this. We get, we lose four, draw four, but that's that's pretty useful to be honest. Oh yeah, the Ephemerate gets countered, doesn't it? Of course it does. So actually, we would be, we would actually be able to. Wow, no lands. That's pretty sucky. So the first spell is countered, so maybe we just go for it here. They can't protect it with Ephemerate because it will get countered. Okay, and just in order to preserve our life total, I'm just going to defend again, I think. Nah, no, you know what? Let's get some. Let's get a bit of damage in here. I have to start somewhere, so we'll take a little bit if they do swing in with another Trostani. But don't forget, in their turn, this resets, so we can then get another double spell. So we can go for two Soul Shatters, which is going to be pretty epic. So in a way, I kind of want them to go for the Elish Norn. Oh, they've taken a turn off. Intriguing. Very intriguing. Okay, so let's just kill two of their guys then. And copying this is insane because it gives two of our creatures in our hand plus three plus O. Oh. Okay. So we get rid of a couple of their guys and we'll increase the power of our. Oh, actually, let's just get, go for an almighty Glint Sleeve Siphoner. We could potentially just win here, I think. Or maybe not. So if we bounce one of the things to their hand, we get a copy of it. Let's just freak him out. <laughs> let's just freak him out. And swing in. Let's see if he decides to block. Blocking the gin, interesting. Okay, so let's go for the glint sleeve. Wow, perpe <laughs> perpetual's mad, right? Because this glint sleeve is an 8 1. We get a land. I feel like an absolute bully today, but you know what? I don't really care because it's fun. 
So they're going to take 10. And don't forget we can just recast the Scholar and cast something else from our graveyard. And they will need two wipes if they want to kill all of our, all of our things. Yeah, let's just pass the turn. <laughs> An 8-1 glint sleeve. This is, this is crazy. So yeah, the sap vitality is uh, pretty awesome. So here comes Alish Norn. So Alish Norn will kill the glint sleeve. But we just win, right? Bounce the Elish Norn. Yeah, bounce the Elish Norn and just swing in and just, yeah. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Okay, here we go up against Alayla. Um Interesting matchup. So we've got the Sign of Blood, which will be good to replenish our hand. So I think we'll start with the Swamp here. And yeah, just keeping the Otawara up could be useful if you draw an island. We could play the island instead and then keep this up as a bounce spell. Please don't be Esper, the Esper dude that draws some cards. Okay, fine. That's fine. So... Yeah, let's draw some cards here. Refill our hand. Hopefully get an island. Okay, sweet. So we've got some blue sources now, so we're looking good. So next turn we could go through this turret Rimazawa and then uh, see what happens following turn. Looks like they're dirtling a bit, which is good for us. We like to see the dirtly decks, especially when we can get a turn 4 Ulamog. That is what the viewers want to see after all. Let's get this bad boy out and start scratching away their eyeballs. Making them wish they had never played against us, I suppose. Could be a Thoughtseize. Hateful idol on. Okay, that's fine. So what are the odds that my Satoru Mazal survives? Probably quite low to be honest, but we'll try anyway. We could just go for the long game and hard cast an Ulamog eventually. Could be nice. So they could tap this artifact for one mana. So here comes a Layla. So in a way. This was pretty good to keep the Otawara, wasn't it? Um, so I guess we're going to want to bounce the Alayla to the hand. So it will slow them down just a smidge. We might as well swing anyway. Yeah, it is annoying that we had to do that, but I'd rather do that than you know face the armies of fairies that they're going to cast out. So... So here comes Layer again. Dead weight as well. Okay. That is pretty annoying. So we're going to want a board wipe or something now. Uh, sure. So we might as well just hard cast some creatures here. Now. Now, interestingly. Because Satoru has zero power. He is now unblockable thanks to Tetsuka Umizawa. So, you can see the synergy here. They're related, of course. But the dead weight is oddly synergistic. Oh, ECD is going to come out, so that's going to... I guess that'll take care of the... Oh, that How silly. How silly indeed. Don't think they read... I don't think they read Tetsuka and Mazawa, did they? I don't think they read it. I think they may have just realised. They can't block this guy. Well, let's see if they have a removal spell. Oh, Dokuchi Silencer as well. So we could do double attacks here. To attack with both. They can't block either. So, first we go for the Ulamog. So, let's swap out that. Oh, silly Billy. Okay, opponent goes first with Gyrodo Doom of Depths. This could be a somewhat risky matchup because we have some mega, mega big fat chunguses in our deck. And if he manages to hit one of them, we could be screwed. And obviously Ulamog's 10 mana, which is evens, and Gyrodo can steal that. It's just a race at this point, isn't it? Oh well, let's see if we can do it. Clone Crafter. Okay, so they're going to get a copy of a random creature in our deck. That is pretty terrifying, not going to lie. Not going to lie. But yeah, we'll uh, 
Don't need to kill this now. We need to kill the thing it got instead, I suppose. One damage, we can take a one, can't we? Thieving Skydiver is the one we stole. Okay, so I guess we could kill... It's two CMC, isn't it? Yeah, we'll kill the... We'll kill the Skydiver, because it's a blocker after all. Lots of nice removal spells. So if we go for Satoru Umezawa here, um, it's just going to die, isn't he? Uh, okay, fine. We need to play on curve. Plus, we don't even have any huge things in our deck anyway, so... Oh my goodness, they're going to get another creature. So now we're desperately in need of... Getting a huge creature. <laughs> Uh, okay, shame we can't actually do both though. So let's just swing in and see what happens. Do they value the clone crafter? Okay, sure. Okay, fine, pass the turn. Let's see what we got, let's see what we got. We've got a lot of interaction. Changeling outcast. Another creature that the Star Witch is kind of useless, that's good. Well, it can't block and it can't be blocked so they could flicker this um, you know what I'm just going to flash out the brazen borrower and kill this anyway why not let's get out of the way ok let's see so now they're going to have to contend with two Two of the ninjutsu triggers. They can tap one of them. Wow, they choose to tap that one. Well, that is quite funny. Because now we can get this guy out. So the only thing is if they have two kill spells in the hand. But we shall see. They can get Garuda out in the next turn. If they get six mana, they can get, they can get two Garudas, in fact. Because the Thassa will flicker it. So maybe it would have been better to... So they missed. Let's see how they get something big. Oh, so they got Rankle, I think. Hostage Taker. Oh, that's going to be rough. Okay, okay. So we definitely have to kill the Hostage Taker. So I guess we downfall this. And then now, if we go for a spell, copies? Right, so let's just swing in. Oh, resistance is futile, my friend. So let's just hope they play a creature, because then we can kill two of their creatures with the Heartless Act. Then Rover, Horror. So that does work. So what they're going to... Obviously, they're going to bounce the... Oh, so... Okay, textbook. So greedy, guys. This was such a greedy freaking move. So, now we can just kill both of their creatures. Goodness gracious me. They went for such the greedy play there. And now I think they've just lost the game. I think we get rid of that. So now they've got nothing to bounce. So I guess we just have to subdue them a bit longer. So they're at 9. So 3, 4, 5, 6. So they can't even go for the Garuda. What can they do exactly? We've got double kill spells. Yeah, the hubris of that was just incredible. Went for a land rather than the actual Jin. Silly. Okay, so your opponent goes first, first with uh, Teferi, Master of Time. And our starting hand is not very good, to be honest, because they're going to be a mono blue control shell. And this is not that much better, but I don't want to mulligan down any more than this. Wither's Glass comes out, okay. So cool thing about Baron is, if he comes in, he can... Return a Planeswalker to its own hand. That could be quite useful. 
Oh, nice. And we get an arcane signal, which is going to be very nice in order to ramp. Obviously, if we can attack with any of our guys, it's going to be mental getting one of these guys in. So we have to decide now if we want to go for something like the Satoru or the Thief. The Thief, when he attacks, gives something treasures. Yeah, let's go for the Satoru now. And what this means is it forces our opponent to react. So he's going to probably... So if he, get, if he does give it to Fairy, he'll draw in his turn and then phase this out on ours. Very interesting. So they didn't go for the Teferi. Let's see if they've got any responses here. Wowzers. Okay, so if we try and ninjutsu and they could counter the ability perhaps. We'll see what goes on here. But resolving a Jinka Tactics is pretty game-breaking on turn 4. But, I mean, I'm, I'd be surprised if they had an answer for it. Because obviously it counters the first instant sorcery of artifact and there you have it very powerful very powerful indeed if you enjoyed watching this video why not try some of my other videos on my channel and don't forget to support me by hitting the like and subscribe button for more content like this